we now have finally have confirmation from mainstream media outlets finally admitting that the United States, the European Union, and that great beloved liberal government in Canada, the Justin Trudeau government that can't get enough of identity politics and, and ridiculous woke stuff, they are supporting the least woke people imaginable in Ukraine. Yes, that's right. Nazis. They are supporting Nazis. Now, if you don't believe me, the gray zone, we've been reporting this for years now. It's been reported in other independent media outlets, real journalistic outlets. But finally, years after we've known about it, we have a mainstream Canadian newspaper, the Ottawa Citizen, admit this is an article titled Far Right Extremists in Ukraine Brag They Have Received Training from the Canadian Forces. And by the way, it's not just Canada, as we'll get to in a second. But here is the subhead. A study from an institute at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. tracks social media accounts of the far right group Centuria. This is a neo-Nazi group documenting its Ukrainian military members giving Nazi salutes, promoting white nationalism and praising members of Nazi SS units. Now, whenever you hear Western governments talk about how we have to support freedom and democracy in Ukraine because of the evil Russians, this is what they're talking about. Literal Nazis. Literal Nazis. So let me just read a few segments of this article. Far-right extremists in Ukraine's military have bragged they received training from the Canadian forces and other NATO nations, a new study from an American university has uncovered. The study from an institute at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. tracked social media accounts of the far-right group Centuria, documenting its Ukrainian military members giving Nazi salutes, promoting white nationalism, and praising members of Nazi SS units, which of course carried out the Nazi Holocaust. The far-right group Centuria has been active since 2008 at a National Army Academy, according to George Washington's Institute for European, Russian, and Eurasian Studies. The National Army Academy is Ukraine's premier military education institution and a major hub for Western military assistance to the country, including from Canada. And here is a very important addition. Centuria members, these are the Ukrainian Nazis, acknowledge on social media they have received training from the Canadian military and have participated in military exercises with Canada. In May, Centuria organizers boasted to their followers that its members currently served as officers in Ukraine's military and have succeeded in establishing cooperation with foreign colleagues from such countries as, here we go, drumroll, France, the UK, Canada, the USA, Germany, and Poland. So all of the great so-called Western democracies are training Nazis in Ukraine who, again, I want to stress this point. These are not just like, this is not just a random Nazi militia of skinheads on the street beating up immigrants. These are Ukrainian Nazis who have received training from the Canadian military and have participated with in military exercises. They were trained at Ukraine's premier military education institution, its National Army Academy. So we're talking about Ukrainian Nazis being trained at the highest levels of the Ukrainian military and working with all of the so-called Western democracies to fight the evil boogeyman, Russia. This is, you know what this is called? This is called state support for terrorism. The U.S. claims that Cuba, insanely, the U.S. claims that Cuba supposedly sponsors terrorism. Meanwhile, the U.S., Britain, France, Germany, Poland, and Canada are actually supporting terrorism around the world, by the way. But including in Ukraine, they are supporting Nazis who Nazi salute and admire Hitler and spread white supremacist propaganda. Meanwhile, at home, these neoliberals try to use superficial identity politics and woke rhetoric 
They're supporting Nazis and white supremacists in Ukraine. And meanwhile, they talk about LGBTQ, CIA, whatever politics and why we have to interrogate our privilege and all this stuff with all this intersectional imperialist rhetoric. I mean, it couldn't be more hollow. It couldn't be more cynical. Justin Trudeau, who in a, in a speech corrected a woman, which I think his friends would call mansplaining, by the way. Justin Trudeau, liberal, neoliberal, intersectional imperialist heartthrob. He corrected a woman who said humankind. He said it because he should call it person kind and be inclusive. <laughs> person kind? No one says that. Meanwhile, his government, his liberal, his neoliberal government, is supporting Nazis in Ukraine. Now, I can't say I'm surprised in any way because we've actually known about this for years. Here's an article my colleague Max Blumenthal published over at the Gray Zone in 2018. The U.S. is arming and assisting neo-Nazis in Ukraine while Congress debates prohibition. Now, we were demonized, attacked as so-called Russian propagandists or so-called pro-Russian propagandists for pointing out this obvious fact because NATO so-called democracies are supporting Nazis in Ukraine to fight Russia. The Nazis are their puppets, their proxies. But if you don't support full-heartedly the proxy war in Ukraine against Russia, then you're called a pro-Russian propagandist or even a Kremlin shill or a Russian agent. Meanwhile, as Max pointed out, there have been photos of soldiers from Ukraine's neo-Nazi Azov battalion using U.S.-made grenade launchers that they post to their websites. But it gets much worse. Here we go. These are photos of some of the Ukrainian Nazis with their torches. You might remember rightfully that there was a Nazi white supremacist rally in the United States the Unite, the Unite the Right rally in which these fascists killed people. And there was all this rightful media attention because they had all these insane torches and it looked like some kind of barbaric 19th century ritual. Well, when Ukrainian Nazis do it, cricket, 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 no mainstream media coverage because these are NATO's proxies. They're cannon fodder in a proxy war, an imperial proxy war against Russia. Meanwhile, if you look here, I'm going to get up another photo here. You can see here in this image, you see a U.S. soldier with a U.S. flag pin. You see that, the U.S. flag? Training. This is, this is a U.S. military officer directly meeting with the Ukrainian Nazi. This is beyond smoking gun evidence. We have literal photos of U.S. and also Canadian, I want to point out, military officers meeting with Ukrainian Nazis and training them. Incredible. Incredible. This is why I call it the Nazi Arming and Training Organization. That's what NATO is. The Nazi Arming and Training Organization. This is a photo of them on the left, the same Azov Battalion fascist doing Hitler salutes. So again, can't say you can't say you're surprised if you've been following independent media because we've been reporting this for years now. But finally, we're seeing mainstream attention in corporate media. I want to point out the final most hilarious little detail, just the, the most delicious detail, the, the cherry on top of this story story of Western imperialists arming Nazis in Ukraine. Here's an article we did at the Gray Zone, which credit to, to the uh, Electronic Intifada was first reported at the Electronic Intifada by friend of the show, Asa Wynn Stanley. Ukraine's neo-Nazi Azov Battalion has been photographed using Israeli weapons. Here is a photo that was posted on YouTube by the Azov Battalion. Again, this is an explicitly neo-Nazi white supremacist militia that supported, that supports 
that rewrites the history of the Holocaust and supports groups like the OUNB, the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, which was founded and led by Nazi collaborator Stepan Bandera, who helped murder, massacre, torture, slaughter Jews and other and, and Romanis and communists and other people and LGBT people and mentally handicapped people with an, an alliance with the Nazis in the Nazi Holocaust. So we see not only NATO Western imperialist so-called democracy supporting Nazis in Ukraine, we see that Nazis are getting Israeli weapons, which says a lot about what Israel actually is as an outpost of Western imperialism. And this created a huge political scandal, but you can see this is the video. And actually what's incredible is it wasn't taken down. That is incredible. It wasn't taken down. It's still on the official YouTube channel of the Azov Battalion, a neo-Nazi militia. And you can see here, this is their symbol. In the background, you can see what is called the Black Sun. The Black Sun is a white supremacist symbol that is used as, like, if you're a white supremacist and you see the Black Sun, it's an immediate sign to other white supremacists. You sometimes see Nazis use, they have it, like, tattooed on their elbow or their knee. And here we have the Azov Battalion, this Ukrainian neo-Nazi militia backed by Western governments, trained by the U.S. and Canadian militaries, which is part of the Ukrainian military because after the NATO-backed coup in Ukraine in 2014, the Azov Battalion, these, Nats, these Nazis were, were integrated into the Ukrainian National Guard. They are part of the structure of the Ukrainian state. And they explicitly use Nazi-style symbols and white supremacist symbols in their logo. No one can pretend to be stupid. They are literal Nazis. And here is one of their fascist extremist fighters with an Israeli rifle. So, once again, Western imperialist countries claim to be so-called democracy. They, they talk about human rights. They talk about freedom. They claim to be anti-fascist, which is hilarious. Meanwhile, they are supporting fascism around the world and inside their own countries, more and more, they carry out fascistic policies of repression against anyone who challenges imperialism, anyone who challenges capitalism, the dictatorship of the capitalist class, the dictatorship of the 1%, the dictatorship of the rich billionaire oligarch elites who control everything.